It's the beginning of a new year and wherever you are in the world, the chances are that you're considering dry January. Well, how dry and why dry? Hello there, you four. Well, no, actually, there's not 4.67 million because this is a side channel. There's 267,000 of you, but we're a tighter, more compact group of spiritual warriors, trainee shaman, come together to awaken. The point of this channel is to discover who you really are, what resources you have within yourself, what unconscious habits you have that are holding you back as an individual, and how you can alter them. So when there is a subject like dry January, dry, 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 Dry January. It's actually good that it's sober because it'd be a difficult thing to say drunk. Dry January. Like, what is it saying really? Well, having like uh, little periods of abstinence occurs in a lot of religions, don't it? Like Ramadan, there's like, you know, you eat during an, and certain periods and fast in others. In Christianity, there are periods of fasting. And that whole like pancake day to Lent is a whole deal, you know, or vice versa. You know, so fasting and i can see why it is because i've done fasts before and it in fact i'll do another video on that but the denial and abstaining from either sex or from drinking or whatever it has a an impact on you because the simple truth is people use alcohol let's keep it to alcohol to manage their moods and to manage their psychic life alcohol even if you're not an alcoholic drinking all the time and i am an alcoholic but even if you're not an alcoholic you're drinking to make yourself feel good Right, and making yourself feel good is a spiritual issue. I don't feel good or I want to feel better, I'll have a drink. That's a spiritual choice. There'll be people already, even though this is relatively early in January, that just couldn't hack it, right? You try and do dry January. If you're a person that tried dry January and couldn't hack it, then you need to have a little look at your drinking in a less temporal way, even though I would suggest one day at a time, it's probably something you need to stop. If you're doing dry January successfully, as in you're able to one day at a time not drink, then you might look at what is changing in you? What is the purpose of a thing like this? Now me, I please God, will be having a dry January because I have a dry February, March, April, I dry everything because I don't drink and I don't take drugs because I can't handle it. But I think there are a few people that don't need to look at their drinking. And the more we slide into what could be described as a t terrible culture of antipathy and despair, the less any of us will be able to be glib about addiction because we're addicted to screens, we're addicted to, to well, certainly drugs and alcohol and bad food and bad lifestyle choices. Addiction is a fixation on an external object that has a negative outcome and in spite of this, you can't stop it. That's my definition of addiction, a behavior or the use of a substance that is negative and when you try and stop, you can't stop. So if you're able to stop, even for a sustained period like January, I don't think that means you're not an alcoholic. It means that you can handle a kind of, like even when I was drinking and using, I once did a month without, I think I still smoke weed, but I did a month without drinking. It was all right, I had to do it for a, like a, I was doing a school play. I was in a drama school, I wasn't a child. Like, and it was pretty tough, but I did it because I was focused on an event. I started drinking straight away and I was right back into you know where I started and stuff. The point of doing a dry January, I guess, is to address the unconscious habits that you have, or maybe you're just doing it for a bit of a laugh, the way people do things like a fun run or a marathon or Tough Mudder as some kind of test of your endurance. If it's that, then respect to you and well done and I hope you've been sponsored and raising some money but if you're not drinking because you have a suspicion that your drinking is a problem in your life that your drinking is fulfilling a role that ought be fulfilled elsewhere then what I reckon you have to look at is what does drinking do for you like Gabo Mate who comes on my podcast under the skin like quite frequently and is a lovely guy he says, with addiction or dependency, you shouldn't look at the negative downsides of even with something as destructive as heroin, you should look at what it does for the person. And it's a brilliant technique actually, because if you are drinking, or if you know someone that's drinking obsessively, what job is that doing? It's giving the person comfort, it's giving the person distraction, it's giving the person numbness, it's giving the person escape. So now you know that that person needs distraction, numbness, escape, etc. They're looking for something. Now, if you don't address 
those issues, the dr there's no reason. It's not possible to stop drinking. Like many people stop drinking and then don't enter into a, a program of support of active recovery and spiritual change. And I think it's very difficult. I do know people that have stopped drinking without the kind of support that I get. I belong to an, uh, anonymous support groups around dependency. And I know people that have been able to, but often there is a kind of an abyss that opens up. Or, and you might notice this if you're doing dry January, did you start doing something else? Did you say, I'm doing dry January. Give me a goddamn another gatto. Get on my God, I've got to eat some crisps. Put that pornography on right now. Like if there is some other consequence that it's help, again, helping you to identify that alcohol was functional in your life. Now, for me, because I'm like 19 years clean from drugs and alcohol one day at a time with the support of like a lot of people and a program and a higher power that I call God, I've now been around the ideas and attitudes and techniques of addiction on a personal level for a long time. And what I've learned or been shown is that you take out the drinking and then you realize, oh my God, I'm actually crazy. I'm a crazy person that wants stuff desperately, that has sort of, like, is riddled with holes and riddled with self-doubt. You know, that, that there are things that need to be addressed. Maybe you're discovering stuff like that about yourself. And if you are, then you can go on a much longer journey. I reckon that unless you're someone who, when you drink, there are no real negative consequences and it's just a bit of fun, you know, if you're one of those people, then I, you know, I, I don't really have an opinion on that because that's a world that I've never really understood because drinking's always been a problem for me. But if you are a person that's doing dry January as a sort of a kickstart, as a kind of respite, as a kind of temporary refuge from what you know to be a damaging behaviour, and please let me know in the comments if this is you, then clearly this is not something that you're just going to be able to do for one month. A lot of people are against abstinence-based recovery because they think it's too hard. Abstinence-based recovery means you stop doing whatever it is. Let's just take alcohol because that's what we're discussing. You stop drinking one day at a time and you never take the first drink. You do not drink no matter what, right? A lot of people go, can't handle that concept. They're like, what do you mean? What, in 10 years? Or what if I'm at a wedding or on a boat or something? People often mention weddings and boats as the situations where alcohol is fundamentally necessary. Although... Boats and weddings are when I've caused some of the most trouble as a result of being drunk. So actually, there's no excuse that these are times when you should particularly not drink. But the idea of not drinking again forever is pretty hard for people to handle. But the idea of not drinking just for today, most of us, I mean, it can, that is quite hard sometimes. But with support and with certain techniques, that is possible. And once you've done it for a day, now you just focus on another day. And that is perhaps one of the most important techniques, whether you're just doing dry January or you've got a project around abstinence that you foresee as being a little more enduring. The fact is, we live our life one day at a time, one moment at a time. Five years in the future is conceptual. None of us know where we'll be in five years or even if we'll have a planet to inhabit. So once you accept, I'm just not drinking right now, that's it. Any decision I make is abstract. I don't need to think about tomorrow. I don't need to think about it. Just for today, I won't drink. If you use that technique for dry January, just for today, I won't drink. I'll deal with tomorrow tomorrow you'll be okay. Things will come up because there'll be social occasions. Oh no, how am I going to get through that social occasion? Well, you either don't go to the social occasion or you go to the social occasion and you decide in advance what you'll drink and you determine that if there is a moment where you feel tempted or challenged that you'll go outside and make a little phone call. It's when you find yourself, the, the things that are most likely to make a person drink who's trying not to is a moment of, sorry, I just dropped my phone, like, is a moment of like intense emotional convulsion, you know, like if you feel resentful or angry or fearful or sad, like this moment might make you drink. Or if you feel happy and elated and excited, that might make you drink. Or if you put yourself in an environment where everyone else is drinking, that might make you drink. The fact is, not drinking in a drink-oriented culture is a difficult thing to do at first but it does become much easier. And there are some of us, and if you are one of those people, you know you are. And if you know one of those people, you know that you know one of those people that just cannot drink, that it will never be safe, it will never be fun. 
it will always be part of a downward trend, occasionally moments of elation that for a little while make the whole thing worthwhile. But if you are on dry January and it's anything other than some sort of like wacky little challenge that you're undertaking with your pals on a group somewhere online or in reality, then probably what you're looking for is something deeper. And in fact, if you're a human being like I'm a human being, you are looking for something deeper. You're looking for purpose and meaning and connection. And because we live in a culture that denies us purpose, meaning and connection, because we operate primarily as units within a financial system that doesn't really care about us, it just cares about the ongoing commodification, about every single aspect of human life, from our health to life and death itself. The world is a complicated place and without a spiritual dimension, I would say an impossible place to inhabit. Good luck with your dry January. I hope you found some of these techniques useful. Let me know what you thought of them in the comments below. How are you getting on? Are you just doing this for a laugh or are you doing it as part of some broader project? Give this video a thumbs up and please, if you're not a subscriber yet, please subscribe to my channel on YouTube or on Rumble. Please, if you like this video, have a look at this one or have a look at this one. And please sign up to my mailing list there where I tell you the kind of stuff I'm up to, including the tour I'm on between January and May all over the UK. Come see me live, stay free.